Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Welcome one and all. Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. You can find me sitting in this captain's chair, coast to coast, pole to pole, all around the world on the internet. I'm coming at you live from a little old guest house in Memphis, Tennessee. This is Keith Anthony Blanchard. Busy show today. <laughs> My guest and I, we were having such a tough time putting all this together to make this happen. I bought new software. And it was a task to get this broadcast on the air. Let me ask the listening audience, is everyone okay at this moment? Everyone can hear me fine. Everything groovy. Use the word groovy that way. I know you're speaking directly to me. I'm assuming so. We're going to get moving. So uh, tonight, I didn't, because I was in such under the gun, uh, I didn't have the opportunity to do a bio on my guest, Ms. Glennis Morales. Tonight, we're going to be speaking about living your divinity. Dana says everything is groovy. Thank you, Dana. And you can count on you. So without any further ado, let me bring my guest on to the show. There she is in all her glory. Hello, dear. How are you? Hi, guys. <laughs> it's good to Welcome. see you. We it took us some time to get everything right, didn't it? Yes, but we're here <laughs> now. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, I'm still feeling that buzz. Not the good one, the jittery one. Do you? Yeah, I can feel it on my stomach and in my lower body. Still that energy manifesting. But I'm sure as we go through where we're speaking, it's going to get cleared and... Um, we're going to move through it. Very, very well. So tonight we're talking about living your divinity. When you sent me that title today, I was hyper excited. Because everyone that follows me and my work knows that that is my gig. And it's great to see a sister playing in that arena doing just that. <laughs> Lead us in, darling. Where are we going? So, um, living your divinity. Uh, I wanted to speak a little bit about um, the topics that I, I put out there, it was ascension. Um, it's such the jitteriness that we're talking about and that feeling is because I feel that a lot of us are coming out of that space of uh, hiding and leaving the divine aspects of ourselves, which is part of the ascension process. Um, and, and it takes, yeah, it takes some time and it takes some adjustments, but we can all do it. Um, that title that I gave you, actually, I came up with it two years ago. It was a title for, uh, it was a title for, like, a, I wanted to do some sort of, like, write, like, an article or something about it. And then it's turning into a total different thing. So I'm happy to be here to share what I have done and what has worked for me during this past five years of my life related to ascension and energy upgrades and living life and just, you know, focusing on different aspects of yourself and still trying to manage your spirituality and live in your divinity, living your divine essence. Um, and then, of course, I know you wanted to talk about light codes <laughs> and energy codes, which are like primordial now for everybody living off grid and living in a different um, new earth and a different new vibration, a total different um, a sphere of, of, of Gaia. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I love it. Love it. You remind <laughs> me of me. So you mentioned that it seems a lot of us are going through these booger times, just like you and I experienced, even though that was a technical difficulty, but we can't dismiss that. Just in general, I think that everywhere, you know, a lot of people are not able to sleep now. There's a lot of issues with insomnia or just restlessness at night. But just a lot of things are moving across the board, obviously because they're moving within us. How, did you, how are you finding your balance in all this movement? Okay, good question. Um, okay, so balance. So I transited from... Before, like if I go in a linear time, I transfer from living a linear timeline into having to project myself in a way that that I kind of knew inside of me 
there was going to come a point of convergence when all of us that we were all kind of like playing our specific roles in different times of space realities, we will come together to manifest together and co-create together. So this is what I feel is happening. I had to, I, I, it was a lot of, for me, it was a lot of trial and error. I had to try it and see what I liked, what I didn't like, what vibrated with me, what was my sole mission was and what I was meant to be doing in the now, in the here now present moment, but also remembering that there was always um, something greater we were trying to create. So keeping that in mind, uh, one time I was meditating and I was going through this whole balance situation you were asking about. And mainly um, when the balance word started to come out for me, I remember that it was when I started to do a lot of astrology work. Maybe a year and a half ago, I decided to start the astrology process of my charts and do it for other people through numerology and um and energy codes so when i started to do that um the sign libra what they call libra came into alignment and then i heard you know we can go in so many different spaces in that specific topic but what gaia said to me what the divine mother said to me at that time related to divine cosmic energy and to live in the divine it was um remember that gaia balances herself out nature has a way of balancing herself out there's no need to push the balancing too much at least when i see it in a collected level when you see it in a way of um trust uh respect living your highest uh mission living your highest living your highest aspect of you just in that level knowing that the guy has a way of balancing your you know your life now if i see it in another perspective which could be balancing different timelines like living a little bit on the 3d and then having to live a little bit on the 4d and living a little bit on the 5d and you don't know how is all that going to come together that is a balance <laughs> right that is the one <laughs> that we're still moving through and um um that's when our higher selves take full control or the way that it has happened for me. It's like you have to allow your higher self to take full control of who you are. Glennis, let me ask you right there. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this very important question. I've been reaching lots of different age brackets of people who are coming to the show for the first time. You and I and many people are familiar with the term higher self. Many mm -hmm. other people hear the term higher self and they want to run away because they have an erroneous idea and understanding of what that is. And you're view in your way explain what the higher self that all spiritual people are talking about what is it so there's a clear understanding for those who it might sort of just booger okay so higher self is um okay so there's different ways of seeing it the way i see it is the highest aspect of me the god self Let's just call it that. There is an in-between. There's people that have fine in-betweens, but I prefer not to divide it because that's part of the whole division thing. I think that if you align yourself with the higher self, um, is that higher aspect of you that guides you through your own process, that guides you to experience life on earth in the highest alignment possible for the betterment of you. Meaning that, you know, if, if you know it's, it's it really helps the human side it really helps your humanity it really is to me a lot of the way i have kind of like come into it it's like i have been able to allow that part of me to fully take charge of my life so i can move into a higher space within me higher self it's not linear i can't really say it's linear we can't really speak about it in a linear level some people see it in a higher way and some people see it, um, you know, they have the higher self and the lower self and the inner self. We have, yes, those are aspects of ourselves. But higher self is just a higher, higher up, higher than five, let's just call it, higher than four. <laughs> let's just call it that, like higher than four, you know what I mean? Like higher than the mind. So can we see mind. it as, since God lives in everyone, can we see it as it's the aspect of us that is closest to God? It's the part of us where we connect 
to our Creator. Oh, it's the part of us that is creator. <laughs> it's the part of us that is that creator. is creator. Right. Yeah, it's, it's 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 just once you connect to your higher self, there's really no not a way to numerically, you know, align yourself to a number. It's just straightforward and up, and it's all together. Another word, as Sue said, which is one of my favorite words, is it would be soul. Yes. It could be, yes, it's part of your soul, but soul, um, soul is, a, is an aspect of self. But, it's, still, um, it's still not all the way yet, there yet. It's yeah. not all the way. Right, no. right. So it's just, soul is like a little aspect of who we are. And it's to me anyways, the way I see it, my soul is the embodiment of my humanity. And my soul is like my records. And my soul is like my space where I remember. You know what I mean? And that's basically how I see my soul. And, and, and another thing, and it would be good to know, because this is, this is part of embodiment. This is part of bringing your energy in your body and being able to embody your divinity and living it. When your soul, that your soul is the only aspect of you that can defragment itself. Your higher self can't. So, for example, when I offer services like soul <clears throat> fragmentation, most people are like, I don't understand what you mean by that. And what I mean by that is like literally bringing parts of your light into your body of soul, which is like a, a etheric body. I don't know if that makes sense. Hope so. <laughs> Absolutely. The soul is the first part that can fragment itself. The higher self cannot because it can't leave its position. It has to be solid, planted, and firm. So it, it's, it's, yeah. Lovely. That was great. I love that little wing. In other words, you got it, right? right. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. So we as we were talking about just a second ago, through all this movement, I'm I I guess maybe I'm one of the lucky ones. Or maybe I haven't had mine yet. I'm still fir firmly planted in this m time of movement. So I must be doing something right. <laughs> I'm still pretty solid and stable. So how are you, are you making headway through this current, dear? Are you getting, being, getting successful at the whole thing and keeping yourself afloat? What do you mean by current of movement? <laughs> just what's happening in the world. Just you and I spoke the other day. You said lots of things are moving. I thought you used the word birth pangs. <laughs> it's just this. Um... <laughs> <laughs> that you're moving into 5D and there's a lot that comes with that because it has to be cleared for us to move into it fully. Because there's a lot of us that have the responsibility of birth it, of birthing it, of being in the birth process of it. There's a, a lot of us that sign up to birth the 5D, you know, to be the mothers and the creators and the creatrix energy and aspects of, of that Gaia in five density, in five dimension. So, you know, obviously you have to birth your own body. You know, you, you birth your own body, but you also birth, um, you birth your consciousness. And then, and, and then in that process, there's the ascension symptoms that a lot of people go through and, you know, feeling sick and all these things. And usually to, uh, my, from in the way I see it, it has happened to me from the, from my stomach up. And then the lower aspect of my body is a totally different play. That's where you get the boogie boogie jitter jitter things. And, the you know, it's like, <laughs> it's like, what do you do? It's stepping into your own feet and be able to walk on Gaia 5D with your own feet and being able to, you know, step in, in alignment with that. It takes, it takes, quote unquote, time. But there isn't really any. Um, but... Um, as I guess what I'm trying to say as a, as a healer, I dedicate myself to this all the time. This is what I do all day, every day. So I'm more aware of certain aspects of myself and other people aren't. And that's the only way I can relate to why you're so saying. So what's the big deal? What's the buzz about 5D? What is in there that we could possibly want? <laughs> well, well, because G Gaia is moving into New York. Gaia is already in New York. What do I mean by that? We're trying to birth ourselves in the outside. We want our outside to look as the 5D vibrations 
energy flow. We want ourselves to be in that space where everything that is outside looks like the inside of us. In body. Yes, it's completely inverted. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so there's a lot of us working behind the scenes into that space. Doing the work, doing like, for example, you get wave one, two and three and you're like, OK, wave one, two and three. These are people that are ascending, that are welcome. They're being welcomed into the 5D dimension. How do how do they get they go through the gates? How do the and then, you know, there's an alignment. Have you done the work? Have you been able to embody your vibration? Are you living your life according to that space? Are you working on your mission? You know, this these are soul questions. And this is part of the process of ascension and embodiment of self. I talk about this a lot since my life is shifting inwardly in an exponential rate. I'm assuming it's 5D. I've never experienced 5D before, so I can't say, well, that's 5D. All, all I can tell you is there is something rising inside of me, something that's expanding, and it's consuming me in such a way, of, as, as I've said many times, that it's overwhelming, but yet it's blissful, and there's a lot encrypted in there that we can't even begin to imagine unless you're experiencing that yourself. But what you can expect in this 5D shift, if you're going to move into that place, is effortless ease, bliss. When you use your physical eyes and you see out into the world, everything's going to blend softly together. The colors are going to have brighter hues. Uh, food's going to taste better. You're going to laugh harder. Uh, it's just all these things because it's it's something that you have to experience to understand what it's like to walk into that gate. It's greater in here than it is out here. This place is infinite. This place is only only it's limited to the mind. So when we get in that 5D in that place in there, it, we begin to understand the reason we were truly born. Right. So that's why I said it's not linear. I can only explain in the, in, the, in the way, like you're saying, the outside looks like that, yeah, like the lights. That's why I recently have been posting a lot of uh, images about the sun um, because that's like one of the main portals. And, um, you know, yes, like the green is greener. The, the smells are like so much better. The, so the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. <laughs> it's like everything stands out to you. There's that feeling of like, oh, yeah, this is definitely New Earth. And then you can see the density in all the things and say, yeah, that's denser. That feels like duality. All right. So, okay. And then now, as if you have done the inner process, if you have done the integrations, the activations, you know, then you can attune to it. And, and then you use that, that space in, within yourself to to bring that duality division, you know, into unity consciousness or into awareness. Um, so it's really the awareness that helps us to see greener greens and f have more feelings of bliss. It's, it's all a, an awareness in 360 degrees on every level. It's just being aware because the greener grass is already there. The hyper states of bliss that we potentially can feel is already there. We just need to make ourselves available to it. Yes, we got to do the work. We, everyone, you know, if you want to be in this space, if you signed up for it, you got to do the work. You got to do the inner work. You got to do the ascension work. You got to, you have to do the soul work. What does that work look like? Well, DNA activation, soul integration, alignment with mission, um, attunements, energy upgrades. Uh, following, following inner guidance, energy clearing, like tons and tons and tons of energy clearing. I cannot even, that, that to me is the first thing that comes, to, comes, comes, comes in mind. Doing energy clearing is one of the major aspects of shifting vibration. Um, because in order for us to bring anything new within ourselves, we got to make space for it. So if your world is full of a vibration that is not in alignment with your highest good, then you got to clear that up without judgment and bring the newness into your life. Bring all those skills that you are able to, you know, develop or that you want to develop, bring all that into 
the, you know, into your vessel, into your life. Right. It's like a pro it's a process. And again, yeah, if, if there's time. a, if there's a light, a white light, a pure light that inside of us shines forever, the mm -hmm. only way it's going to shine through the vessel as pure as it possibly can is we have to clean the lens. <laughs> you gotta clean everything. You gotta clean the lens. Yeah, at least um, we're talking about soul level. We're talking about you, you know, we're talking about the inner you first. You know, we, t we have to do the work for ourselves first. And then little by little things in the outside start to shift and your reality starts to shift as you become more aware of who you are within yourself. And, and that's when we lose lin linear. That's when we lose the linear aspects of ourselves. When we, you know, that's when linearity becomes something of, you know, it's still there, but it becomes a little bit more harder to, to use. It becomes a little bit more harder. At least for me, that's my experience. Last interview you and I had, we were talking about you being able to time travel. And since that interview, I've done it as you have in the same way you do it, maybe different application. But I never really just started being hyper aware of it all the time that in a moment I could literally shift. And I've been having some great success. So thank you for the prompting on that for sure. Great. Yes, I, and I have felt it. I am more aligned now to your higher self. And so that's aspects of you that are being able to use that into into the now present moment you know that's the whole point like sharing what we have sharing what we know and and getting there together you know doing the work um if if you want of course helping each other is a, is definitely a whole new thing yeah yeah do you want to get into some codes or you want to wait for just a little bit longer uh it's up to you i is there anything else, you guys? Is there any questions? I would love to have Yeah, what about from the Facebook listening audience? Do you have any questions out there? Please feel free to bring them through now with my powerful guest, Ms. Glennis Morales. I get her name wrong so many times. <laughs> right. Just, um, yeah, I, I, I feel like Glennis the divine Morales. aspect of ourselves is just in the process. And anyone that is, I know you speak about the people that don't have any idea. But I feel that within the, within the aspects of ourselves that we're actually talking right here, right now in the present moment, you can bring that into perspective of one, you know, bringing that into one, into alignment of one and knowing that living your divinity is listening to that, to everything within yourself and being able to attune to it from a place of love and prosperity and abundance, balance, um, activating, integrating, all those things are part of either three dimension, because I have done it for people in the three dimensional aspects of selves. It's not something that you cannot not do. It's just in different yeah, right. process. Yeah, you can do it. It's, it's not that you have to be enlightened or, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not that. It's just simply it takes, if you have a teacher that can allow you to travel that journey, great. If you have a teacher that, and if, you, if you're okay with that, right? So is there, there is a way for everybody to get into this, you know? So, and I feel like the first thing about, about, about this is just staying present in the here now moment. And then we always have to come, you know, I do it all the time, bringing myself back to center, being present, because there's still things that we have to deal with in this three-dimensional plane. You know, there's some stuff that we still have to work on. Um, but once you're signed up for this, there's no way back and you're always no, supported. There's it's no impossible. <laughs> there's no way back. You, in fact, it's impossible. You can't undo what you've done. You can't unenlighten yourself. <laughs> Glennis, we have a question from the chat room from Sue. She asked a question. How do you feel about Reiki healing or do you feel that we can heal ourselves? Okay. Um, Yes, we can definitely heal, heal ourselves. We are innate healers. We all have that within us. Um, some souls more than others, but we can definitely do so. Um, now, in, relations, in relation to Reiki, um, Reiki, as 
as the as a construct of what it is, I feel is 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 great. Um, I got in Reiki myself uh, many years ago when I started, um, and and I feel that um, you know it's always about inner judgment. If you feel it works for you, then great. You know, um, I I personally don't use Reiki for myself. I I just use my own techniques on myself, and I try to heal myself on my own. Um, just to practice that inner healer. Um, and um, I feel Reiki is, uh, there's many techniques, there's many things about it. There's, there's so much. I just think in terms of like, in terms of, the, of, a, of a healing practice, either for the person that is gonna receive it or give it, is is very is is a process that is very like it's different like it's not for example it's not like intense that's my my perspective of it um i i know that it goes through the layers of the outside um and i in my experience it doesn't really go deep you know it really helps the auric the aura fields and it helps to you know it, it's got it's good for someone that's starting it's good for someone that is going to their own space and into a slow you know into their own process in a slow way um as a practice i think it's great i know many people that have gotten it i know many people that have done the 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 you know they've done the um, how do you call it the they got in their degrees and things like that um uh, I personally, again, I don't, I don't use it. Um, I, I, I love the fact that you're able to practice so much of that channeling to the higher dimensions, and you're able, to, you're able to bring that energy into into your body and give it to someone else. I feel that that's a great method of, you know, connecting with your higher self, connecting to something outside of you, um, to bring it back into your body. Um, yeah. And, and I feel that uh, since we all have our inner healer and we always, um, you're always doing that inner work um, when you're in that space of knowing how to heal yourself and knowing how to bring that healer into perspective, then yes, I feel that is great. Um, we all have it. We all have an inner, inner healer. Uh, and, and some people choose to, to expand on that and some people choose not to. And that's why some of us are here facilitating that space for healing. So basically, we get to the level or the depth that we choose, whether we choose consciously or not. We, we don't expand any further than that. So we have to find it within ourselves, the place that's still hanging on for dear life. Let go a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or a lot. <laughs> yeah, we got it. Yeah, it's letting go that's what letting go is the process of allowing right i know is we you know what i feel it is we're working through this amazing communication situation um collectively have another question from the chat room we're going to get right to it do a commercial break uh glennis would you announce your information where people can find more about you and what you're doing and how they can connect with you to just stay in touch with your teachings so I have my Facebook, it's Glendis Morales. Uh, you can look me up. And also I created a sacred space called Luminica. Uh, I created Luminica as, as just basically <laughs> everything that I am. I have such a big passion for that space. And it's, it's from there, from, from, from that energy, I bring all my teachings and all my healing. And um, you can look it up as well, Luminica, L U M. I N I C A, um, Luminica Healing, and um, and then the website. I have a website. I also post on Instagram, and and there you can always keep up with um, what I'm teaching, what I'm what I'm what I'm feeling, what's happening, um, and hopefully I have a book or two soon out there so people can have it and read it and study the material in a different way. Fantastic, everyone! A quick announcement. June 24th, Memphis, Tennessee, Radical Transformation, Crossing the Bridge to the Soul, 6 p.m. $20. If you're not from Memphis, Tennessee, why not take a road trip? They're always fun. We've seen the movies, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to be doing a presentation, Radical Transformation, 
And I'm going to help you connect to that which you are, which you are already connected. Because if you weren't, you couldn't exist. Your memory is being connected to your soul. Your vision is being connected to your soul. Your memory does not come from your brain because that turns to worm food, nor your mind because when you cross to the other side or you have an epiphany of a spiritual enlightenment, everything about mind becomes shattered. So I'm going to help you tap into that aspect of yourself. Then I'm going to plug into it with you and I'm going to be, begin to move the energy. It's going to become palpable and you'll be able to feel it. Radical transformation, crossing the bridge to the soul. June 24th, 6 p.m. Memphis, Tennessee. Hope to see you there. Glennis, welcome back, dear. I, I just so want to get into this code stuff with you. It is just so cool. I love the light language. I, oh, it's so encrypted with everything I want. <laughs> I see. I know. You're like, right. Dang. Oh, before we do that, let me ask this question. Someone asked the question in the chat room. Maria asked the question. Or did she? I am a healer, but how do I heal? How do we heal ourselves? I think that question probably came in right after when I was away from the screen when you shared with Sue. You want to give a quick overview of that as well? Um, I am a healer, but how do I heal myself? Yes. You're already doing it. If you are 100% a genuine healer, you are healing yourself. That's like the consciousness level. And another level is depending on what type of healer are you, uh, use the things that you give to others, use it, use it towards yourself. You know, like if you're hands-on healing, healer, you do hands-on energy, you just do that for yourself. If you are like me, a spiritual counselor, or do you do a DNA activations, do them for you. But uh, in a consciousness level, if you do, if you are a healer, just by being a healer, you're already in that process of healing yourself. You just have to be aware of it. So listening out. audience out there, if you still want to ask questions, the floor is open for you to bring in your comments or your questions. I'm ready for some light codes, darling. Tell me, let's start from the beginning again as if I don't know because actually so much life has happened since then. Refresh me on what this is, how you do it, where you got it from, what's the benefit, all that stuff. Okay. So I started... Uh, I started down, down, downloading or uh, uploading codes maybe five years ago, four years ago. And codes to me are either numerical or they're also in the form of light language. I don't know if I can show you. I don't know if you can see it, but like that. Um, now, um, when, of course, back then when I received this energy, I wasn't aware of the of, of what I was doing. It was like, I was not aware of the whole thing. They said to me, my guide said to me back then, you know, you're going to call this, you're going to call this that you're doing, you're going to call it soul, soul language. And, and you're going to start writing it and you're going to share it with other people and you're going to create a therapy out of it. And I was like, really? How am I going to do all that? They're like, don't worry about it. So I started to journal. I created a bunch of journals and I created, um, uh, books about it and I and I started to 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 use it in my daily life um, first um, it was just writing it was just like a writing like a style of writing like it just flow like I was able to see it and just I would just feel it and write it so it was like a feeling I, would, I was getting these emotions and these feelings and and I knew there were not only me meaning my human side it was just like all these people all these parts of me wanting to talk at the same time or wanting to express themselves at the same time. And I felt that it was just quicker to, to write it or to speak it. I was like, you know, we have to transcend um, language. You know, we have so many issues with miscommunications um, in, because of language and the way our brain functions through it. So um, within me, there was like this, this wanting to create something that it was universal. So that's when I, I came up with the soul language through my guides. Um, and then I never felt really open to share it with the outside world until I started to feel that I wanted to find other people like me that they would speak this, the languages or that they would, you know, write them. And then little did I know that 
it was already out there some way or another. People were already kind of like doing it in their own way. They would call it downloads and things like that. But the way it came to me was totally different. So um, meaning downloads from like Arturian guides or aliens from another dimension. I feel that what I do is literally from within me, from the essence of who I am, which is part, of course, cosmic. Um, so I use, I use the languages for everything. I use my light language for all of everything that I do. I can speak faster. I can explain something in two seconds instead of, instead of an hour. But, you know, the brain works in such a different way. And, and, and when I have to translate everything to English, it's like, whoa, <laughs> you know, it takes some time. And, and then I'm a uh, Spanish native speaker. So I bring all my codes into Spanish first, and then I have to translate it into English. And all that process goes within myself. So that's what I do literally. So as time moved, as you know, time was moved past and, you know, years went by, I, I, I met other people that were going through the same process that I was going through related to codes and, and sharing it with other people and then speaking the codes, speaking it and manifesting them. So, so that's it. Um, I, I created my Instagram about it and I posted it out there and now there's the whole community um, that does light language. Um, and light language, again, like I said, is different for everyone. My, if you have any questions, yeah, go for it. Yeah, do you, Sorry. Do you because, you, no, I love it. By all means, I'm learning. That's why I, when I'm silent, I'm learning. Okay, okay, cool. <laughs> when, when, because you do your own, there's only one light language, it's across the board. It's not like there's a English or a Spanish light language or a French light language. But that being said, since you can interpret interpret your own light language if someone was next to you and speaking light language since you're able to interpret your own would you be able to understand them exactly word for word what they were saying if you were next to someone of course you probably would get it in the heart but would you get it as a dialogue okay so there's something because the way i created mine it was through feelings so you have to be connected to your feelings, to your humanity. It's not like you can disconnect and, and like I said, just download or upload, you know what I mean? And just when you come back into yourself, all of a sudden you're like, what did I just do? That, that's not aware, that like you're not aware of it. So what I've realized that is that most of the times I'm feeling things. It could be a message. It could be a specific energies that are sending you know things that i'm working for a book or something that i'm trying to do for someone else like a client or something like that and i know what i'm doing it's like a feeling i get it hits me in my stomach so it's right on my solar plexus when i feel it on my solar plexus then it comes into my heart but my heart just process the information process is what i'm trying to say process and then eventually it comes into my mind and then from there, I have different ways of dealing with this energy. Um, now, how can I say this? Um, the language is a way of speech. Let's just put it that way. You're speaking it. And when I speak the language, many aspects of me come through. What I mean by this is, for example, maybe I'm speaking through my higher self. Maybe uh, a part of my goddess is talking. Maybe an alter ego of mine's talking, or you know, it's, but I, I am more so the time I'm aware of it because I have taught myself to be aware. You know, maybe my ancestors are speaking through me or through the codes. Maybe a message is coming for someone, but I'm aware of what I'm doing. I'm not disconnected from myself. For those out there who have never experienced such things, are you open to the idea of? letting them hear, see, and most important, feel what it's like when someone speaks from such a deep level from within. You open to that idea, dear? Yes, of course, I would love to. Check this out, y'all, it's beautiful. Okay, so... Esto más que hace que a tu lado es mi osi, que a monto por aquí, et estoro a la que me toque que que estoa, Estere clare in the brush of Escoa, Eshimimi stopopo coamantasri, Asto correlare star at a mincha so, a bibicu coam and so, et the crowd the ladishi amontrocrack of so. 
Um, a lot of so I mean, so kicky at starter cocoa at throw a lot of shitty to popo em and sa a lot of co ed bobo subish me me stope a kaki ste and taka em so aki at to kwa laki as to kwa or em so eki at to mo a ash to o a poke a la dra ish to ko ish to a e almost so ekin to so e um turika kish to me a oka em so kuba laka su astreke Mishto asimi o popo kela brosho su inspiratra e ka e iga starebo e tia o e brosho su e kiki tu e isturo bo a su alare ku min tu shubo e kia side side mumo su mu an tu taki diri asi o lore ke a bibi siri e ku min shu su a tu su e um. And to the while, I can just do the brush with some me to call him Borokets. As to the Laraket to some moment, she said at Rolora Cucuta Pats, a key, Kashimumo, come on to sa. Look, okay, she be stored a quiet key, stroller, she be stopped up to Sarah, Catrulam into Sutu to West, I kick a car, she be the troller, I didn't decide. Is to the boys to a cacao, and she was sad, Nintaki side, neither the Kishimimi at the car, the Rodra style, because. E bo kashi mi e stare. E zre koe, te stai me me koe, do mu mo te stai. A ra so e shi. E bo stu poro koe, te stai, mu ma ma so e be bo koe, e la ro dro e bo e stu ko koe ka mun so po pa shi pa. E tu se ma tu tu ratsu. A ko ko be chitu ro koe dra. E stiri tru a se kishi e a mu mo stru e tri. In curatro lara de coste, trashimi bestue, cucu em in sturo tro lara bosso. So. And. Translate. <laughs> so, um. Well, they, they, they were greeting you, they were greeting the group, they were giving thanks. And what I mean, they, they I meant many of parts of me that were talking. Um, I also felt a lot of, I'm sure, I don't know if you, I'm going to tell you this because probably you know this, a lot of Andromedan energy in the yeah. Council of Andromeda, um, beautiful guides, um, beautiful blue coats, blue energy, um, Archangel Michael, the part of me, willpower, part of me of Archangel Michael, step forth, also speaking, um, uh, just letting us know that we're all protected that all is well, that the jitterness and, the, and, that, and those feelings, what we're feeling is because we're being reborn. You know, it's, it's rebirth and we're all learning how to rebirth ourselves and still hold on to ourselves in the process. Um, it's all about, you know, it's just, it felt like community, like don't give up. Giving, giving us extra strength. You know, when you're birthing, sometimes it's pain. Sometimes it's like, oh my God, what's going on? You know, you still have your mind going through a lot of processes. So they're, they're saying, it's going to be, it, it's, you know, it's going to be perfect. It is perfect. It's all a matter of attunement to your presence. Um, and then they ask, you know, I guess feel like an energy of, while we do this, we got to be patient with ourselves. We got to be, you know, have self-love, self-care in the process. And, and, and basically celebrate, you know, celebrate the small things that we do, like coming together, sharing this, because this has never been done before. That's true. That's absolutely true. <laughs> so they're saying, in a way, I wouldn't feel it's like, why are you not celebrating this coming together? You all should be celebrating this. This is, this is never, ever, nothing like this ever has been done. Um, celebrate that. Keep the celebration because everything else that feels like shifting, like the tectonic plates of the earth, I can feel them like shifting, you know? If you're connected to the earth and on that level, we can feel them shifting. Is saying, you know, as she shift, you all shift. And your feet, your legs are shifting. So <laughs> we, we can either write in the book or there will be a book written about us. 
because <laughs> in the future, people are going to look back and say, oh, my God, that's how it was done. By you being on this radio show, by me doing the work I do, by everyone in the chat room doing those things that they do. The story, you know, we can write, we can put an insertion into the book consciously, but the story they're going to write is going to be about us and how we did it. How we set the groundwork for everyone else that comes to, behind us. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And, yeah, yeah, I can... I can see that. I, I never saw it that way. I felt, I always felt like, um, I did write about it a couple of years ago. I wrote about, um, how we're going to be, how we are pioneers of the era. And, um, I can see how many of us are still not completely out there. Like you, and I think I wrote about this. You're not going to find this on the TV. You know what I mean? It's not going to, like what I'm saying is that you're not going to see us on like, you know, like we're not that, you know, I, in my mind, the way they, the way I've seen it is like, is this underground spiritual, spiritual, spiritual work that is being done. And only a few amazing people that are really connected get to feel it and get to get through it. You know what I mean? That's why we have kept it so, such a tight, like you said, such a tight circle. And, and I feel like that circle is expanding as the earth expands and she moves and she allows more of her to come into alignment with it, all of us. You know what I mean? Um, so totally, totally. I love it. These light codes that you were talking about just a little earlier. What happens if I get my hand on one? John or Jill Doe gets their hand on a light code. How can we apply to our life? Or is it, is it for that kind of thing? Is it a code that someone can get and learn it, play it as a piece of uh, music or a sound bite, and it and begins to vibrate the person's being to where it brings this or how do the codes actually work? Do you give them to people and say, I have a special code for you. This is your personal vibrational code. Use it. Yes, I, I give them to my clients and depending on their level of, of um, on their own personal level of comfort i'm able to just write the i write it for them and i tell them to meditate on it and when i see them next session usually there's a shift uh, either is a consciousness shift there's a physical shift something happens you know the codes that i create the codes that i create are specifically oriented for the people that i either work with or Luminica, or what I do. Is that so just, basically, you mm -hmm. actually see them begin to manifest themselves as the code. Yeah. They begin it, to manifest themselves as the code. It's just the way it's, it's pure. It's because it's pure energy. There's no... It's you're, When you're doing it from your heart, there's no there's no other way. You know what I mean? It just comes out of, it comes out of my heart. I just attune to them. So they know, so that, you know, I can get a feeling of what they need or whether tr I'm trying to help their soul once. And that's the process that I have. And then I do post things about codes and things like that. And those things are more collective. But, um, but again, because I created my own way of speaking, saying it and expressing it, you have to be in tune with me in order for you to receive it properly and being able to integrate it within yourself. It's not like I, I don't, I just don't put them out there. I don't do that. Because you never know. Like I'm very, I like to keep things, <laughs> you know, in a, in a way that I know what's happening and, and, and they're not getting mis misused or they're not getting, you know, so um, there's always that. Yeah, it's like leaving a power tool lying around for someone who's immature to pick it up and cut their toe. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't do that. I have strong boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very cool. I mean, that's what's that's a light worker. That's called being responsible, the ability to respond, responsibility. And in my responsibility means I'm not going to allow this to just to run around unmonitored for some knucklehead to pick it up and injure other people with it. Yeah, because it is powerful and it is um, and it's creation. You know, there's it's pure energy creation and the energy codes. Um, so it has every code has its own signature. Even when I'm speaking, my, my voice, my, my mind signature, my heart signature, my womb signature is coming out on the codes. 
you know, so, so they're personal. Do you ever have visions as you were speaking light language? Yes, yes, I, I have. It used to happen more before. Now it doesn't happen as much. Um, I get most of my visions or my foreseeing. I get it more into when I go into sleep mode. Which, like you said, I'm not really getting a lot. I'm also not getting a lot of that recently. Um, um, but to me specifically, when I have a code and I'm able to express express the whole language into paper or say the whole thing, for example, like you said, like a like a download into um, into like I can. I'm working actually in something like this. Um, I downloaded a specific amount of codes between uh, parameters. So I download the parameters and I'm able to recognize what the like what's inside those parameters related related to my codes and I know what exactly what they're for. That's how I do energy healing through my codes. That's how I'm able to sh change awareness through the codes. It's just faster than listening to a guided meditation. I'll be honest, you know, is um or listening to numbers. For or listen, for example, 432 um, or the Fibonacci frequency, all that, yes, that works, and that works, but when the codes are correctly set up, they're just, it just accelerates the whole process. It, it just literally, it accelerates the process, and you're able to see huge, amount, huge amounts of shift and change in a short, short time. You know, things start to happen a lot more quicker. And even if you're not 100% aware of what's happening through the codes, you still know you're doing energy work. You still know you're doing healing work. You still know you're doing inner work. It's not like, you know what I mean? It's I'm, I'm not giving you something that is, you know, that I just, I'm just picking up from like the ethers. You know what I mean? I don't do that. That's the whole point why I explained I created them. <laughs> so I, I, must, I must be having my <laughs> own codes. I don't know that I have them because... You know, things are shifting for me very quickly. And as, as many of people that come into my live feeds when I do them, when they come in there and I begin to shift and I go into soul mode, Yana Va speaks, things begin to move. The energy begins to move and people begin to move. I begin to move and it circles within itself. And next thing you know, the energy becomes very, very palpable. So somehow I must be receiving codes and just not aware that that's what they are because my awareness is not looking for them. Basically, I'm just expressing it. True. So what I've noticed, for example, with you is that you're a really good translator. You, I can, because of your connection with uh, the divine feminine, uh, you're able to, you're able to connect to, you know, the divine feminine and translate or create a bridge between uh, one person or the other. That's my feeling from. You know, because you, that's you, accurate, actually. Yeah, you're like, um, you're, um, how does, how can I say this? Um, you're a communicator. Um, and communicators, that's part of their job. That's part of their mission. They, they're here to communicate, to make things that are, that are said. And, and, and they're, you know, if I'm saying something that is getting to the other end in the proper way, nothing is getting misled or nothing is getting, you know? So yeah. there was so, a learning curve involved in that, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm more, it was more of a getting out of my own way. Obviously. Hmm. You can download them. You can have your own codes. I've seen people speaking in tongues like this. You know, all they have to do is allow it. Like, it's like you know. You can try it now if you want to. <laughs> I'll give that a whirl when I do my live, when I get into my zone. Yeah, dig it. I'm going to have to try it. But you see, you also have that, that Spanish tongue. You can do all that rolling stuff. It might come out a little goofy for me at first until I get my self-image out the way and allow it to happen. Right? That's right. the gig. That's the gig. So, that's, yeah. It comes, I call it kiss car. Like, um... Uh, I don't know how to ask some more. Um, I feel like it's, um, for some people, it's, it's easier to connect to a guide. For example, if you have 
if you have like the name you said, if you have the higher self or like if you have an, I'm not a higher self, an, like an Andromedan guide or Arturian guide, if you're able to ask for assistance for that, for that entity to help you bring those codes into you and then be able to speak or write them. Um, but it's about to like, it's, you know, it's, you just have to let go. You know what I mean? You got to let go of preconceptions and like why, how, yeah. all that. You just have to, you know, like be cray cray for a second, embody your craziness and then just say, no one's watching me. There's no judgment on this and I'm going to allow right. it. You know, simple. So Glennis, we're at the top of the hour and the, even though this show, we were talking about going a little longer. Sometimes when I get in this mode, my blood sugar drops so fast. I need sustenance almost immediately. So would you yes, like yes. to leave us with a final thought or thoughts that our listening audience can implement, take into consideration to, as they move forward, they can expand nicely into. So, so I feel like if you're interested in um, going through the process of leaving your divinity, uh, just remember, you know, that, is all doable. You can do it. Um, it takes a little bit of work. It takes a little bit of time. Um, but we're here to support you. We're here to help you and to open space for you. And if you're already in that process, if you already have, if you have started your, your process into connecting with your divine self and leaving that aspect of you, and you have already started your ascension process, please remember to keep upgrading, keep, um, keep flowing into the stream of who you are and embracing who you are. And if you do need help, if you do need guidance, don't be afraid to ask for it. Don't be afraid to look for it. Um, I just get the feeling this is going to be something very important coming up in the next few months. I can start already to feel a bunch of people coming into my energy asking for help and assistance and they don't know how to they they feel like it's so much they don't know how to deal with it but this is about living multidimensionally there's no other way you got to live multidimensional and living multidimensional is about accepting and allowing others to help you when you're ascending yeah it's not it's never meant to do alone never. yes never glennis thank you for being a powerful guest as always here in Central light radio i appreciate your presence again dear Thank you for having me. Everyone, Ms. Glennis Morales, would you uh, announce your website one more time? Let's, let's get these people to get in touch with you. You're a powerful teacher. and God knows if I ever have a situation, I need someone. I'm ringing, I'm ringing your phone. <laughs> so my website is www.luminicahealing.com. Luminica, L-U-M-I-N-I-C-A, healing.com. And my name is Glendis Morales. You can always look me up. Keith has me in his in his website in his I have done a bunch of interviews with him already and I'm so happy for this and he also has me in his Facebook if whenever it is that you do listen to this video or you do get in touch with this video and this transmission uh, look me up and we're here to help whenever whenever you're ready thank you dear I appreciate you you're welcome thank you everyone, everyone Miss Glennis Morales I love speaking with her. Love it. She's powerful. She's multidimensional. Uh, when I grow up, I want to be just like her. <laughs> yeah, next week on Center of Light Radio, my guest is going to be Victor DePonte. And we're going to talk about journey into being. When you lay down at night, you have nothing to do. Remember, go inside. Breathe like you want something greater than you've always known as yourself. Watch what happens. The gate will open up and you will be playing in the arena of your soul. Peace, love, and light. See you next week.